Uh, welcome. So in this video, we are going to look at the concept of anatomy and branches of anatomy. Introduction. What is anatomy? Anatomy is a branch of biology that studies the structure of organism. So in anatomy is one of the branches of biology that is trying to study the structure of living organisms, either externally or internally. That is anatomy. And this anatomy, it plays a crucial role in understanding how the body functions and it is various systems. So one of the very important uh, aspect of anatomy is trying to give a clear understanding how our body work. And the field of anatomy has evolved over a centuries in cooperating new technologies and methods for study. So generally, the anatomy of 100 years ago and the anatomy of today is different. The reason is because in anatomy now, there are a lot of technological advancements. So this new method and technological advancement is incorporated into anatomy and now increases a lot of, it's now open up a lot of discovery due to the technological advancements. So in anatomy, as I said, is one of the branches of uh, biology that always trying to study the internal or the structure of the living organisms. You can see from anatomy, this is heart, this is thyroid, this is uh, lungs, this is stomach, this is spleen, this is small intestine and the large intestine. This is kidney, this is liver. So in anatomy, we are trying to study the structure of a living organism. So then what are the importance of anatomy? One of the important of anatomy, it is very important in medical food patients, especially in diagnosis and treatment of patients effectively. But with the knowledge of anatomy, we will be able to diagnose a disease properly and we can also be able to treat patients effectively because with the knowledge of anatomy, it will give you an idea of exactly where the problem or where the disease is located in our body. So understanding anatomical structures, aids in surgical procedures and interventions. So if you are able to understand the anatomical structures of a living organism, it will help in surgical procedures, that is in surgery as well as the intervention. So the knowledge of anatomy is also vital in a field like physiology, sorry, physical therapy, sports science, and biology. So if you are able to get the knowledge of uh, anatomy, you will be able to have a clear concept and knowledge on physical therapy, sports science, and biology. So you see, as I said, one of the importance of anatomy is disease treatment and diagnosis. Like, for example, this is a microscope. So you can use microscope to visualize a particular organ or to visualize a particular structure in order to effectively identify a disease condition. So what is gross anatomy? So whenever we said gross anatomy is the anatomy that involves that involves the study of structures visible to the naked eyes. It means that all structures that we can see with our naked eyes is formed under gross anatomy. So this uh, gross anatomy, it involves or it includes the examination of organs, systems, and overall body structures. So in gross anatomy, you can examine the different organs of the body, kidney, liver, because there are organs that you can see them with the naked eye, so you can examine them physically. You can also examine the system, like the cardiovascular system, and then the overall body structure. So dissection is a common method used to explore gross anatomy in educational settings. So that is why in gross anatomy, we use dissection method to explore the gross anatomy. 
So growth anatomy, as I said, it focuses on anatomical structures that can be seen by the naked eyes, such as the external and internal bodily organs like kidney, liver, you can see them. You can see our nose. So growth anatomy fall on that is. So then the next one is microscopic anatomy. So in microscopic anatomy is the anatomy that focuses on the structure that require a microscope to be seen. So there are some organs or there are structures in a way that we cannot see them with our naked eyes except when we use microscope. So those structures that require the use of microscope is fall under microscopic anatomy. So the study of structures that can be seen and studied with a microscope is microscopic anatomy. And this microscopic anatomy is divided into two. We have cytology which is actually the study of cellular structures. So in other cellular structures, we cannot see them with our naked eyes, except when you use microscope. And the next one, the another branches of microscopic anatomy is histology. So histology is the study of tissue samples. So the branch, or this branch includes, that's the microscopic anatomy, it includes histology, which is the study of tissues and the cytology, which is the study of cells. So understanding microscopic anatomy is essential for comprehending how tissues and organs functions. Then the next one is developmental anatomy. So in developmental anatomy, we are trying to examine the changes in anatomy throughout an organism's life. Like for example, in humans, we started from embryo. Of embryo, blastula, morula, and then different, and then embryo, after embryo, we have the fetus starting from childhood to adulthood. So in anatomy, so in developmental anatomy, it is actually associated with examining the changes in anatomical structure of a living organisms throughout the organism's lifetime, from the zygote up to the adult and old state of life. Then this include embryology. That is, embryology is part of developmental anatomy, which actually involves the study of development from fertilization to zygote. So fertilization to birth, the study of development from fertilization to zygote is called embryology, because we have to start from the sperm Excel fits together fertilization and it will keep developing until when it reaches to a stage of birth. So that stage for fertilization to give him birth is under embryology. So understanding developmental anatomy, it aids in identifying congenital abnormalities and growth processes. So if you are able to understand developmental anatomy, it is easily to identify the congenital anatomies. So the anomalies, that is some problems that are associated with an inborn child or with an unborn child. And it's also aid in understanding the growth processes and how we grow, how we develop, how the, how the child develop. So you can see developmental anatomy, it traces structural changes throughout life. That is how it does, you see from the sperm cell to egg cell up to the level of, you see, this is even the study here with time, started from two hours, 30 hours, two days, four days, eight days, 11 days, three weeks, four weeks, six weeks. So it keeps developing. So to the branch of anatomy that associated with Tracing the structural change throughout life is developmental and embryology is part of the developmental changes of the body before birth. Oh, so then, uh, so comparative anatomy. So in comparative anatomy, it involves studying the similarities and differences in the anatomy of different species. Let us assume you have different species. You see, you have human, cat, wally, and bat. So the uh, comparative anatomy is anatomy that trying to study the similarities and the differences among different species of living organisms.
what and what do we have as human and also there in cats and also there in Wiley or bat. So the study of similarities and the differences in the structure of a living organism or of different species of living organisms is what actually fall under comparative anatomy to understand the similarities and the differences. So then uh, this comparative anatomy is very important to provide insight or in providing insight in evolution or in, in, or in evolutionary relationships and adaptations among organisms. So comparative anatomy is a branch of anatomy that also trying to give insight on the evolutionary relationship and adaptations among organisms. So this branch is crucial for fields like, it's very important a field like zoology, that is study of animal, and paleontology, that is the study of causes. Helping to understand the evolution of life. So it is very crucial for a field like zoology and paleontology in helping to understand the evolution of life. So the next one is functional anatomy. So a functional anatomy, it focuses on the relationship. It's trying to study the relationship between anatomical structures and their functions, how the organs are and how are they related with functions. So functional anatomy is trying to actually link a relationship or bring a relationship between anatomical structures and their functions. Like liver, what is the anatomy of the liver and what is also the function of the liver? So that is under functional anatomy. So then the next thing is uh, that this functional anatomy, it helps in understanding how anatomical features contribute to movement and physiological process. That is how our liver is an organ or how our legs in terms of their features and in terms of the structure contribute to our movement and also the physiological processes. So this branch is particularly important in a field like kinesiology and sport medicine. And then the next thing is actually radiological anatomy. So radiological anatomy is associated with utilizing imaging techniques to visualize internal structures. So radiological anatomy is one of the branches of anatomy that we apply the knowledge of imaging techniques to visualize our internal structure. Like this is ribs, you can use x-ray or imaging techniques to visualize the status of our ribs to see if there is any breakage or not. Some of the techniques that are used in radiometric anatomy we have X-ray, CT scans, MRI, and ultrasound, which are essential for diagnosis. So these are some of the techniques that are used in radiological anatomy and it's very important in disease diagnosis. Radiological anatomy, it bridges a gap between anatomical knowledge and clinical practices. So if you are able, so based on this radiological knowledge, it's trying to bridge a gap between our anatomical structure and clinical practice. So what are the future directions in anatomy? So advances in technology are continually shifting the field of anatomy, which enhances the teaching and research. Virtual reality and 3D modeling are emerging tools for studying anatomical structures. So the integration of anatomy with genomics and other biological sciences promises exciting new discoveries. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and join my YouTube community and see you next.